Adam Lerner, BrooklynPhotoWorks.com, and today we are back in Lightroom, and I want to share with you guys some very cool advanced editing techniques that I sometimes use and thought might be helpful to share with you as well. So here we are. I'm back into my Cuba photos. Um, this is one that I've actually never edited before, so I'm going to do it for the first time with you guys, and I want to show you some cool things right here in the basic module. There's a bunch of tools in here that you believe it or not that if you hold down the option key, you can actually black out the screen and you can see where the areas that you are adjusting are being affected. So the uh, the sliders that are affected by this are exposure, highlights, shadows, whites and blacks. So those are the only ones that are in there that are affected. Now, so what I'm going to show you here, guys, is if I hold down the option key and I click on the exposure, you can see that the image is completely dark. That means that, that there's nothing that is overexposed. So if I slide my exposure slider up, you'll see some areas start to kind of take a little bit of color and whatnot. And you see those little areas here, let me hold that down again, that are blue, okay, that are turning bluish. That means that that's when they're starting to overexpose. Now, that to me, right then and there, that image looks a little bit too overexposed because it doesn't really represent the kind of vibe that we had here, okay? So rather than, ex than affecting the exposure first, because I really do like this exposure, I'm gonna just concentrate on the white point. The white point is a point where for color, that is where the white is at its truest point. It's kind of like when you used to use Photoshop in levels, it's the same kind of deal, but now, or for a while now, Photoshop, I'm sorry, Lightroom has its own slider. So I'm gonna hold down the option key and I'm grab the whites. I'm just gonna move the whites up. And I'm just gonna go there. And now there's a couple areas that you can see, like in, on the bicycle, that are that are whiter. So what happens if I hit on the before and after, you can see that the difference is very marginal, but you can see particularly in this area here, and let me see if I can put that in there for you. That's the before and that's the after. You can see that the whites are a little bit truer. I really like the look of that, okay? So now I'm gonna zip out of that and I am going to go into my uh, highlights area. Now you can see there's a couple of areas where the highlights are a little overblown. So I'm just gonna drop it down to about there and that's fine. Fine, okay, now I'm going to do the same thing with the blacks. Typically, how I adjust the blacks by taste. I don't typically use the slider for this, but I'm going to demonstrate it anyway. Okay, so you can see right there, that's where the blacks are clipping. And if I go down, the blacks will clip even more. If I go up like that, to that point, the blacks are completely not clipping. That means that we're probably going to get a lot more detail in the shadowed area. But what I like to do is I like to kind of adjust the blacks to taste, okay? So I like to have a little bit of that depth. And let's just look what happened with this edit here, okay? It's a very subtle difference, but it's starting to get somewhere. Now, we're going to look at our exposure again, and our exposure is fine. And, you know, I can up the exposure a little bit, but I really do kind of like this muted look that we have going on right here. So I'm going to kind of keep it like that. I'm going to add a little bit of contrast. And what that's going to do is that's going to kind of even bring the darkened areas even a little bit darker. And it's just going to give it to me a little bit more flavor. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the clarity slider. And the clarity slider is going to boost my midtones. And in doing so, it's kind of going to take all the little edge details and give them a little bit of a shimmer, which I really like. Okay. And it's just going to make the image appear to be a bit sharper. Now, I don't want to go to this point because then the image kind of looks a little bit kind of ridiculous. Although there is something cool about that. Um, I want to kind of just take it back to what I think is just a little bit of a sharper look, but nothing too crazy. And I'm going to look at the before and after, and you guys can really see, like, look look particularly what's happening in here at the difference, okay? That's with the edit, that's without the edit. And you can really see there's a little bit more of a kind of a sharpness, a liveliness to it. But now that I've done all of that, I want to check my exposure again. And you can see now that there's a couple areas that are a little over. So now I've got the opportunity to just duck things down a little bit. So cool, look at that. Now I'm going to grab into my shadow areas here and you can see here if I keep going up like this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to eliminate or I'm sorry, I'm going to add more shadow detail. Okay. Now if I go down like this, I'm going to reduce my shadow detail and that's where you can see the areas that are really starting to go black. You know, they, they go to color and then they go to black. I actually, in this particular case, I like the way that there's fall off. That means that these areas back here are going all the way to black. I think that that's really, really cool, and I want to keep it that way. All right, so there you go. I just wanted to share with you guys the, the um, editing techniques where 
you can use the option key on a Mac or the alt key on a PC. And when you're holding down that key and you're moving the exposure, highlight, shadow, whites, or blacks sliders, that the screen will go completely black and then you can see the areas that are either under or overexposed. And that can help you to adjust your image. For me, the most important one out of all of these things is the white point. That's the one thing that I really want to get right. The other things I really want to do in dial in to taste, to how I like to do it, that's the creative process right there. So um, I hope you guys found that helpful. That's it for now. What I'm gonna do from this point on is I'm going to finish this edit and I'm gonna speed it up time-lapse um, so that you can see me do the final edit until the very end and then um, you guys will get the full edit um, right here and right now. So that's it for now. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and we'll see you soon.